I've done my fair share of horror movies on this show, but I think it's about time I did a horror movie parody. Yeah, sure, lots of people know about the Scary Movie series, but before that we had Saturday the 14th, Pandemonium, Wacko, National Lampoon's Class Reunion, and this movie, Student Bodies, which was one of the first to parody the slasher movie craze of the early 80s. In fact, the poster even says, at last the world's first comedy horror movie. Yeah, suck it, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Well, it's from the early 80s, so hopefully it's more like Airplane and not one of those Seltzer Friedberg parody movies. Or Queen Kong. I definitely don't want another one of those. Student Bodies is a 1981 slasher movie parody written and directed by Mickey Rose, a screenwriter known for working on some of Woody Allen's early movies, as well as writing the movie I Wonder Who's Killing Her Now, which sounds more like a slasher movie parody than this does. Student Bodies sounds like it could be the name of any 80s teen comedy. The movie also had a troubled production history, being made in the middle of a Screen Actors Guild strike, and as a result, it features a cast of mostly unknown actors who hadn't been in a movie before, and in a lot of cases, have haven't been in one since. Producer and co-director Michael Ritchie also decided to be credited under the Alan Smithy pseudonym, which is always a great sign when watching a movie. Just ask the director of Gunhead. If you're wondering why this movie got made, the opening text informs us that the previous year 26 horror films were released and none of them lost money. Eh, don't worry, there'll be some horror movie bombs eventually. I've even covered a few on this show. So anyway, the movie begins on Halloween night. Uh, I mean, Friday the 13th. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis's birthday, which is November 22nd, apparently. You know what? Fuck it. Just say it takes place on Black Christmas, too. That movie doesn't get referenced nearly enough. Okay, time to meet our killer. <sighs> Jesus, what is this killer called? The Weezer? Oh, wait, I guess he's called The Breather, so even in 1981 they knew that was a cliché. Also, while he's credited here as Richard Brando, the person who actually played The Breather is a matter of some debate. Most sources usually credit actor-comedian Richard Belzer for the role, but others say it was actually one of the film's producers, Jerry Belson, who voiced The Breather. Well, great, not only is the killer's identity a mystery in the movie, but it's one in real life, too. I'll tell you what's not a mystery, though. Apparently the makers of Godzilla 1985 also got some sponsors for this movie. Oh, and, uh, maybe Quentin Tarantino did some early work on this? I don't know. Get ready for things to get scary. <coughs> wow, I've seen cat and dog scares on this show, but that's the first time they've ever been combined. <laughs> And screw it, throw a fart joke in there, too. Wait a second, starting with a babysitter talking on the phone, pointing out horror movie cliches? Was Wes Craven a fan of this? Hello? What's your favorite parody? Not only do I think the call is coming from inside the movie, but I think the phone just prematurely ejaculated. <laughs> they don't take it personally, it's just... It happens sometimes, you know? I mentioned Dr. Pepper earlier, but man, there are a lot of brands that wanted to be associated with this movie. Video brought to you by Raycon. Nah, I'm just kidding, I didn't get a sponsor for this video. <laughs> Surprise! Charlie! Okay, even though this is a parody, that could be a fake-out scare in a real slasher movie. Time for these two to get it on. Charlie, you clean. What kind of a question is that? Of course I'm clean. Besides, can't wash away herpes. Ah, come on, you're just not scrubbing hard enough, dude. I gotta admit, I do kinda like that the killer wears rubber dish gloves here. His choice of murder weapon is a little questionable, though. Everyone knows a post-it note would be way more effective. In any case, the killer better hurry up. Usually the opening kill is done in the first ten minutes. Oh, these stairs. <sighs> <sighs> now just my luck, we get a killer with bad cardio. I hope I don't die first. <sighs> Jesus, no wonder you're called the breather. Move your ass! Okay, we finally get our first kills of the movie. The girl dies via death by a thousand paper clips while her boyfriend gets hefty bagged to death. And if I see one more horror film, I'll throw up. 
What makes them think the American public wants to watch such stupid trash? Oh, nice of them to include the Siskel and Ebert review within the actual movie. Huh, that's weird. Who left all this product placement here? One of the main gimmicks of the movie is that it comes with a handy kill counter to keep track of the victims. Oh, if Dead Meat ever makes a video on this, he'll have the easiest job ever. Even though two students have been killed, the rest of the school doesn't seem to care. Stop! How can you think of sex now? I can never stop thinking about it. What else is there? Funerals get me hot. I mean, all those dead bodies, babe? How am I supposed to control myself? Sex kills. Sex kills. Back, now we're back. Do you want people to be suspicious of you? Ah, oh, come on. That guy's clearly the crazy Ralph of the movie, not the killer. It's a common cliche that slasher villains kill characters after having sex, but this one doesn't even wait for him to get laid first. What's that? I'm gonna give you a horse head. Yeah, <laughs> Well, this guy said funerals make him hot, so his own ought to really make him pop. <gasps> hmm, either two more students have been murdered, or this girl's making the worst a Hegau face ever. Oh well, time to get introduced to more of our characters. There's the disabled nom vet, the blind black exploitation star, the any random 80s girl. You know the types. Oh, and there's also the weird shop teacher. Perhaps man's highest cultural achievement is the horsehead bookend with rape and violence. Well, I wouldn't put him above rape and violence as far as mankind's greatest achievements, but they are pretty good. All right, can this guy just hurry up and cut his thumbs off so we can go home? Or go to the girls' locker room? Both work. Someday you'll be old and ugly. Oh, no, I won't. Take a look at this. I have these saved up for the very first sign of wrinkles. What is it, vitamin E? Cyanide capsules. <laughs> Okay, that got a chuckle out of me. And at least the breather has a reason to pant here. <laughs> I'm taking it out of my pants. I'm doing what my mommy told me not to do. <laughs> Ugh, the breather's turned into the beater. Guess I was right about the phone earlier. <laughs> yes, mom jeans, flat butts, I love flat butts, yes. <laughs> so anyway, our main character is Toby, a student who doesn't approve of sex, which is ironic considering I think she shows the most skin of anyone in the movie. <sighs> Hey, wait a second, breather. What are you doing? A pin that says no means no. And wait, don't go down into the boiler room. There's just gonna be a Nightmare on Elm Street parody down there. Or at least this guy. Mr. Malvert! You Mrs. Malvert. No! <laughs> no to Malvert? Uh, even if he's not Freddy Krueger, I think this guy's killed some kids too. Or at least done something to kids. Not to worry though, he just wants to show you today's paper. You know you're in trouble when even Big Bird looks sad he's in this movie. Wait a second, I think I know how this scene's gonna go. The Joker's gonna try and shoot the mayor. Oh, and remember when I talked about the janitor earlier? Well, turns out I may have been right about him. You know it's a slasher parody when even during a parade the students can't help but get busy. Let's get comfortable, baby. The floor may be hard, but I'm solved. Okay, as dumb as a lot of this movie is, there are some good lines here. Uh, here I am. All right, as soon as the breather's done jerking off again, he's gonna kill these two. And just how is he gonna do that? Uh, hi. Uh, no! You like eggplants? With a politically incorrect joke, that's how. Oh, whatever, at least the kill count's still rising. Student bodies, student bodies. Title drop. Oh well, time for some meta commentary on 80s horror movies. In order to achieve an R rating today, a motion picture must contain full frontal nudity, graphic violence, or an explicit reference to the sex act. Okay, why is this movie rated R then? It doesn't have any of that shit. And since research has proven that R-rated films are by far the most popular with the movie-going public... Oh, don't worry, that's gonna change. PG-13 all the way, baby. The producers of this motion picture have asked me to take this opportunity to say, fuck you. Yeah, nice try, but you still get one fuck. If you want this to be rated R, you're gonna need more than that. Seriously though, that is the only reason this is rated R, since the rest of the movie is pretty tame. Oh wait, here's a drawing of a dick. Maybe that'll help this get an R rating. Because she was found near the bodies, Toby's a suspect in the murders. That makes sense. She does do the best Richard Belzer impression of anybody at school. The girl's obviously a liar. Let's give her the chair. If you want, I can saw her head off. Look, we already got the R rating earlier. There's no need for any extra gore. But wait a second, how can Toby possibly be the killer when he immediately phones in? I won't be. 
around the bush. I killed everybody, and I'm glad. <laughs> uh, great, the guy's a murderer and a prop comic. Toby is told to see a psychiatrist. Maybe he can get to the bottom of why she dresses like a grandma. Or a 21st century Brooklyn hipster. I'm going to ask you a difficult question. Are you up for it? I, I think so, Dr. Sigmund. Please, don't be so formal. Call me Daddy. Hmm, I think the doc's gonna do some deep probing. And in case you thought I was kidding... How do you feel about sex? What? Did I pronounce it right? Eh, just call it fucking, then you'll really get an R rating. We also discover the reason Toby doesn't like sex is because she had an abusive dad, so I guess she grew up in a parody of a Rob Zombie horror movie. We'll continue some other time. Goodbye, Sybil. Uh, Eve. Uh, Toby. Kunta Kinte, got it. Despite seeing the psychiatrist, everyone still thinks Toby's the killer, and it doesn't help that no one really liked her in the first place. I have no idea if the janitor is the killer, but I'm pretty sure he is Slender Man. Anyway, because this is still a teen movie, it's time for the big game. The janitor even brought his date. <laughs> Oh, Melvard go post on incel subreddit. Jeez, no wonder this high school's losing the game. You don't make every single player on the team Rudy. And once again, movie brought to you by Dr. Pepper. It's been a while since we had some victims, so time for some students to try and have sex. Al, don't stop. It's cold. All this garbage is falling. The garbage gets me hot. Yeah, me too, pal. Toby also gets knocked out investigating the students having sex. And damn it, movie, I need a kill count, not a plot point count. There we go, that's better. Joan? You look terrible. What's this white powder? Ugh, cut with chalk. Hmm, also what that actor said at the rap party. Well, that's another student down. And once again, Toby's the only one on the scene of the crime, making her the prime suspect. Eh, just kill all the people looking for you. That should prove your innocence. Or hide with a dead body. That works too. Okay. Who had beans for lunch? Oh, what do you know? This movie actually shows that people shit themselves after they die. Okay, that one was Toby. The breather calls to say he'll kill again at the prom, but never mind that. Toby needs to find a disguise. What is all this? It's from the junior class play. They're doing a non-musical version of Grease. Couldn't get the rights to the music. Mm, too bad it's not Grease 2. No music would have actually improved that one. Wait, what the hell's happening now? Hello, it's me, the breather. You're probably wondering who I am. You're Richard Belzer. Or Jerry Belson. The jury's kind of still out on that one. Who could I be? Could I be the innocent-looking Toby? Would you trust a girl who looks like Prince Valiant in a plum sweater? <laughs> Okay, you got me with another one, movie. Meanwhile, Toby goes to the prom dressed up as Sandy from Greece, and damn, Toby, I'm feeling a little grease lightning myself. Hardy, I can't go to the prom with you. Everyone knows I'm the only friend you have. All right, I'll go in alone. And I'm gonna keep my eye on you. Especially on your tits. Oh, this prom looks pretty happening. Even Lawrence Turney from Reservoir Dogs showed up. Not only that, but Toby's disguise is such a hit, all the 40-year-old students are hitting on her. She only has eyes for the principal, though. Hi there, big boy. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you look so young, and, and I thought you were a student. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame her. However, some of the students start to see through Toby's disguise. Telling you, that's her. I'll find out. I'm gonna dance with her, and if I don't get a hard on, it's Toby for sure. Okay, there's another funny line. Did you get him? Uh, I said his keys, not his cheese. Too bad it's followed by another stupid one. This chick gets disappointed when the principal is crowned prom queen instead of her, but that doesn't mean she can't still get laid. Hey, baby, the bookends aren't the only thing that's horse-like in this room. Unfortunately, the guy doesn't have a condom, so he goes to get one. Okay, come on, movie. I know wearing a condom doesn't feel as good, but I wouldn't say getting one's a big mistake. One problem, though, the breather's not gonna wait until they have sex before he kills them. <laughs> and apparently he killed her with wacky sound effects. Normally I'd make a necrophilia joke here, but the movie saves me the trouble and just does it for me. You're dead. Let's have one for old time's sake. And don't worry about protection. The killer brought a condom for your whole body. Oh, poor kids. They bought the farm. 
At least I'm safe. Bad news, pal. The breather's even killing people who aren't about to get laid. You know what I think is to blame for all this? Violent video games. I mean, just look. The breather clearly played Doom more than a decade before it actually got released. And that's not all. I hate my car. It's a gorgeous K car. I just watched it an hour ago. I buy Japanese. Just as I thought. A killer and a weeb. Wait a second, he can't kill him with a chainsaw. This movie isn't nearly rated R enough. There, that's better. Meanwhile, Toby looks for clues to the killer's identity, and failing that, maybe she can get him with some Home Alone-style traps. Wait a second, turns out the secret to the killer's identity has something to do with some topical references. Toby also finds some evidence that the principal is connected to the murders, and bad news, you're the one that he wants. Mr. Peters! You're naked! I don't think you know what the word naked means. I think the principal may have been on incel reddit too, and if you don't believe me... But did anyone notice? Any girls? Any prom queen candidates? No. All those lights and budding bodies. Each and every one of them was caught doing... They were all a bunch of Stacys who only wanted chads and not a nice guy like me. I joked earlier about Toby home aloneing the killer, but that's actually what happens here. I don't think Kevin McAllister got a kill count, though. Apparently it's broken because he comes back for a final scare. Okay, so Toby got the principal, so that means the killer's been stopped, right? I didn't have time to bag him. Miss Mumsley! Miss Mumsley. Oh, okay, I guess it was actually... that... lady. Okay, what really happened is the principal killed all the girls and she killed the boys. And considering this has a twist that there were actually two killers working together, was Wes Craven a fan of this? Wait a second, what the hell? Dead characters coming back to life? Are we getting the Slaughter High ending here? <laughs> You know, this movie is getting kind of silly. Wait, and now there's zombies? This really is the Slaughter High ending. And if you remember that one, it ended with everything being a dream. Julie, Bertha, you're all alive and, and you're, you're who you were in real life. Oh, Monsieur Dumshi, I had this dream and, and you weren't even my French teacher. Wait, so the twist is she was actually in a Wizard of Oz parody the whole time? Okay, well, I guess they had to end the movie somehow. And so Toby and her boyfriend lived happily ever after and... Wait, why the hell is this still going? Well, I ask that you just turn your back on my address. And I'll slip into something more comfortable. Eh, uh, I sense another twist coming. <laughs> Holy shit, I think Marty might be the killer. I'm the killer. Hardy, you're, you're not the killer. Or Hardy, whatever, close enough. This is what you get for not putting out sooner, bitch. Okay, so now the movie's over and, oh, for fuck's sake, what is this, a Lord of the Rings movie? End already. Others have only brought you one flower, but I've brought you two. And if we should ever meet again in <laughs> I would've went with a Shining parody ending where Toby's seen in a yearbook photo from 1921. But whatever, as long as the movie's over now. So there you go, one of the very first slasher movie parodies. So, is this the Halloween or Black Christmas of parody movies? Uh, I said his keys, not his cheese. Eh, I don't know, I'd say it's more on the level of like, the dorm that dripped blood of parodies. I guess. There are some funny lines and gags to be had here, but for every joke that lands, there's several that don't. Probably the most interesting thing about the movie is noticing what had become cliché in slasher movies to the point that they were able to be parodied even as early as 1981. Wes Craven didn't do that until well into the 90s. As far as parody movies go, this definitely is an airplane, but I will give it this. It's a hell of a lot better than Queen Kong. Well, it's all for now. Until next time.
Albert can have punch. And Albert helped make punch. What are you talking about? Albert P. Red. <laughs> I guess I'm dancing.